Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this week's Stay Connected webinar. We are very excited about the topic this week. Laron Henderson with Collective for Youth um, has agreed to lead a discussion around the audiobook provided to all after school conference per, uh, participants this year, the other Wes Moore. Um, and we appreciate Laron uh, taking the lead on this conversation this week. So thank you to Laron and everybody for joining. Moran, we'll let you take it away. Wonderful. Kim, thank you so much. Uh, anytime I get an opportunity to just join with you all to do what we do, it, it's good. I think partnerships across the, across the state are good, and ours is definitely a, a positive one. Um, thanks for, uh, for uh, just giving me the opportunity to talk about the other West Moore. Um, I think the title that I gave you was who are the people in your neighborhood? Uh, unboxing the other Westmore. Um, why that topic? I think um, who are the people? If you, I grew up watching Sesame Street and all those different things, and so that song "Who Are the People in Your Neighborhood" stuck with me forever. They're the people that you meet when you're walking down the street. I could sing the song, but I'm not going to sing the song. Um, but as I read the book and I listened to the book, I was just amazed at one, um, there were two Westmores in a similar community, but they had different experiences and how many times my name may not, there may not be another Laron or another Kim or another Sam, there may not be another you with the, with the same name in the neighborhood, but there's somebody that is experiencing something that you're experiencing that has a different outcome. And I think the way that we look at community and the way the book brings out uh, how we look at community, I think is important. Um, but just highlights, if you haven't read the book, um, I encourage you to read the book. Uh, I think I was told a year ago or so, or two years ago, Westmore was in Lincoln. He did some work in Lincoln for, for some folks. Um, and as I have shared the, uh, the book, they're like, oh yeah, we, 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 we heard of Westmore. We, we've done some stuff with Westmore. Uh, and I think the book is typical, it's typical to many of the stories that we don't hear. Westmore just decided to put his, his version of the story uh, of his life in print. And uh, um, he gives a quote, let me see if I can find a quote. I have a couple slides, but he gave a quote, he says, the written, the written word isn't necessarily a chore, but can be a window into new worlds. And I think just by him taking the time, if you're not from the Bronx, maybe you're from rural Nebraska, maybe you're from Omaha. Omaha, uh, Nebraska, wherever it is, or not Omaha, rural Nebraska, it's not the Bronx. And what we see here is the same, but it's different from across the, uh, across the world. So what I want to do today, if I can, if I can just box this and as we unbox, I want to share a couple of quotes that I uh, really liked in the book, uh, in the audio book. And then I um, want to talk about uh, some things that we're doing here in Omaha, just around racial equity. Um, I think that I thought, I thought the book was good at talking about the different systems and I don't want to get it. We are, I'm gonna say this with a smile on my face. We are too close to a bunch of different issues, politics, uh, 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 stats, all those different things. That's not what I wanna do today. I definitely don't wanna talk about that today, but I think we can, we can get on the, we can get, open a book or we can get online and we can find those statistics of just the incarceration rate and all those different things. But I really wanna talk about as we go into this, as we're coming out of the last few months of uh, COVID and racial injustice in our um, unrest, racial unrest in our, in our country, this is a great book that uh, can catapult, have some discussions around what is real racial equity. And so I wanna talk about that and just give some group expectations that we use here in Omaha. Uh, and I wanna open it up to the state open it up to whoever wants to read a book, one, read a book and join us for some critical conversation of what are we talking about? Uh, not talking about uh, 
your emotions behind something, but really taking the time to look at the facts behind what we do, why we do, when we do it, and so that we can, in a sense, change the narrative as it came as it can. I think the narrative in the other West Moore is very, very was was very critical because there were two different people, but the narrative that they had and the very, very thin line, the very, very thin line that one of them took and ended up someplace else. And then uh, in the end, they, you know, they're just a couple blocks away, but the way they found out about that. Have, now, I will say this before we start. Has everyone on the call uh, read the book? So if I give some quotes, if I give some quotes or something, they'll, they'll have some reference to it. Yeah? Okay. Um, can I share my screen? I can? Okay. Um, like I said, who are the people in your neighborhood? There was a quote that he used. Uh, can everybody see that? Your neighborhood? Okay. Um, it's, it's a long quote. I'm just going to read it. I found myself surrounded by people, starting with my mom, grandparents, uncles, and aunts, and leading to a string of wonderful role models and mentors who kept pushing me to see more than what was directly in front of me, to see the boundless possibilities of the wider world and the unexplored possibilities within myself. People who taught me that no, that no accident of birth, not being black or relatively poor, being in Baltimore or the Bronx or fatherless would ever define or limit me. Why do I like that quote so much from the book? I like that quote because one, our foundation of what we do and kind of looking at the book, our foundation is a uh, family. You know, in Nebraska, we are a strong rule. Uh, we are, family is important to everybody. You can't tell me I can't talk to a young person in school or on the street, wherever it is, that they don't say family or family values are important to them. And so this really, one of them had this, and this was the real Westmore, or I guess the other Westmore, but the other one didn't have that. And so what I, my takeaway from that is as educators or as folks working in the after school world, how many times do we take for granted that a young person or um, an older person has these has this this foundation in their life? And are we doing the best that we can to, as he said, to push them forward uh, to see more than what is directly in front of me or in front of them? I think I've told this story. And as, as I was reading the book, I was thinking about this story of an after school program. And I won't go real deep into the, the story, but there were two girls, there were two, two uh, seven-year-old little girls playing pretend uh, in an after-school program. Have you guys heard this story before? Have I told this? No? Two, true, true, true story. Two seven-year-old seven little girls are playing pretend in an after-school program. On, the, on their pretend trip, they decide to go to the mall and they had shopping carts when they went to the mall. They're pushing their shopping carts around in this little activity area that we had, put, pushing their shopping carts around and they get, done, they get done shopping and they get up to the, 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 the pretend cashier and the first little girl starts taking out all her stuff. The second little girl's like, ooh, that's some great stuff. We're gonna have some fun with that. Oh, she pays the pretend cashier with her pretend money and she steps aside. The second little girl gets up to the pretend cashier and starts taking out her stuff. And the first little girl says, you can't buy that. There's no way they're gonna let you buy that. You can't buy that. And the first, the second little girl, you can see on her face, we're playing pretend. This is supposed to be fun, so on and so forth. She ends up right before she gets ready to pay the pretend cashier. She looks at the second little girl, looks at the first little girl, and says, "Okay, how come they won't let me buy that?" The first little girl, with a very serious look on her face, hands on her hips, says, "They don't allow you to buy those things with food stamps." Now, let me unbox that. The first little girl had limitations because of how she was being raised. The second little girl didn't have that. So in their pretend world, there were limitations. One was just playing pretend I can do whatever I want to. The, second, the, the first little girl could not do that because she was stuck in what she could and what she couldn't. Now I hope that makes sense, but as it pertains to the other Westmore, one of them had opportunities, one of them did not have opportunities. And I think a lot of it comes from the foundation 
that we have people around us in our neighborhood, in our school, to make those things happen for us. Does that make sense? Give me a head nod. So I'm working. I'm working. Okay, very good. Um, the second thing, I think I've already said this. The second thing is um, the written word isn't necessarily a chore, but can be a window of new opportunities. I think when we look at these, uh, when we look at these stories and we look at book clubs, one, many times a book club can get us out of where we are and get us in conversations just to expand what we're doing. And really, if I could say, help destroy our ignorance when it comes to certain topics, especially books like this. Books like this, it is a real life story from one person's perspective to the other. But when it comes down to it, these are two people that were affected by circumstances and systems. And we all know, I, maybe as I was reading the book, I know some West Moors. I know, and if I can say this, I know some good West Moors and I know the other West Moors. I, I know them. They, they're, they're, they're just like me with choices that we have. Another quote, another quote that was in, was in the book, it said, or in the book, it said, he said, I guess it's hard sometimes to distinguish between second chances and last chances. How many times have we been given a second chance with life, with anything? to do something different. It could be in a grade, it could be at a job, it could be at school, it could be whatever it is. But I guess it's hard to distinguish sometimes between second chances and last chances. And throughout the book, the writer, Westmore, got many chances to do things over. If you guys remember when uh, he was at the military camp after he had uh, gotten, gotten in trouble at, at his real, at the, the private school and he went to the military camp, and the, his, his, his cadet group leader gave him the wrong instructions, gave him the wrong instructions and said, hey, you want out, so go ahead and leave. He got lost, he was going in a circle. But then later in the story, later in the story, he gets another chance when he's with the young man where they're going to get some, uh, some Philly steak sandwiches and he knows his way around so he's able to find his way back. You know, just how, how ironic was it for him to have that and to have that opportunity? So why do, I, why, do I, why do I talk about that in the book? Is because we never know what situations we're gonna be in that we're going to be able to use in the future to do something great and keep us out of trouble or do something great for somebody. So um, I hope that all makes sense. So I guess my question is in, in, the, in, the, in the short time that we have, um, why would you want to start a book club? Uh, why would you want to take some time to sit down and read uh, a story or read a book with some other people and have some conversations? Really, it's about building community. Um, and I have found that when we can come, come around and look at facts, look at the same thing and have conversations, one, we're really seeking understanding. We're not seeking to be right. And we're seeking to expand our knowledge and destroy ignorance. So one of the things that we've done, we've been doing for the past, I don't know, six, seven, it seems like the past forever. We have had a book club or we've had a racial equity group that meets every Friday from 12 o'clock to one o'clock. And we have discussed many, many different issues, many, many different topics, but it's always based on some type of literature that we have that we can all look at and we can all digest and we're coming from the same language. Because maybe you have met, I, we, we've all been in conversations with folks. I'm just going to assume this. We've been in conversation with folks where we're talking two different languages. It could be, it could be, a, it, I do this with my wife all the time. I have to know who I'm talking to. Am I talking to Heather, the wife? Am I talking to Heather, the business person? Am I talking to Heather, the mother? Am I talking to Heather, the... If I don't know who I'm talking to and I don't know what I'm talking about, now if, if Laron, the husband, is talking to Heather, the mother, we may miss each other. But if I'm the father talking to the mother, now we're talking about parenting. And so doing a book, doing a book club or, or coming around with some, with some common interests and some common knowledge, has helped. So what we've done on our Friday 
our Friday uh, conversations, we have a series of expectations, group expectations that we all follow. Uh, and since we're talking about racial equity, it has helped us stay grounded and uh, help us understand where we're coming from. So whatever it is. So the first thing that we do, we want to get proximate to the problem. On our, on, in any book club or on our specific racial equity calls, we are talking about black and white equality. We're not talking about anything else. There's a whole bunch of things that we can talk about, but when we come, we want everybody to know, we want to talk about, uh, we want to be very proximate to the problem. What are the issues around racial inequity or racial equity from a black perspective and a white perspective? That's it. We, we, we make it pretty clear. We wanna change, we wanna make sure that we change the narrative. And what do I mean by changing the narrative? If we're not looking at the same, if we're, if we're looking at information from two different perspectives and two different value systems, two different facts and uh, uh, systems, it's not going to work. So we want to make sure that the narrative, like in the narrative of uh, Westmore, there was the narrative that I'm from a, it could have been told that he was from a, uh, a single parent family living in the ghetto. Both of them were. And one of them went to jail and one of them ended up being a scholar. Okay. But if we would have left out all the other stuff in between, we would have missed the real meaning of the story. So really we're trying to change the narrative as it pertains to racial inequity of dealing with the facts, you know, dealing with the percentages, dealing with the narrative that is in the news uh, of what's going on. The, the, next. the third thing in a book club or in, in, our, in our group, it's we expect inconvenience and, and, and discomfort. Anytime you are trying to destroy knowledge, to, Anytime you're trying to destroy ignorance, there's going to be some inconvenience and there's going to be some discomfort. Because if we're going to come together, not everybody can be right. You may be able to be heard, but you're not, you know, there has to be a standard. So it may be a little uncomfortable. Someone saying, well, no, I don't necessarily agree with you. Well, here's what Westmore was saying. Well, I don't think he was saying that. And we have to be okay with that. The fourth thing. Stay committed and engaged. Um, all of us have been a part of a, a, a group where when times get tough, especially when you're talking about racial, racial equity issues, when times get tough, staying committed and staying engaged is not something that we want to do. Well, I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to go home because I don't like what you said. No, we are in this process. We've created this safe environment. It is okay. It is okay to, uh, to stay here. The fifth thing, really just respect the process. When it comes to destroying ignorance, when it comes to um, especially racial equity, uh, there's a process. Some things and some systems have been built around uh, racial injustice that it's not going to take a month long book club to make, to, to make that happen. We're gonna have to have some conversations. We're gonna have to have some understanding but the process, as I, as I always say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. But each time I, can't, I cannot do anything for what I expect you to do, but I can expect myself to expect the process. And then if, if everyone takes responsibility for that, it changes everything. And then uh, the sixth thing is listen respectfully and respect confidentiality. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, the honor and the respect that the Westmore that was not locked up had for the for the Westmore that was locked up was incredible. He could have just said, hey, I'm better than this person, so on and so forth. But the confidentiality and the, the trust that was built in, in the book was incredible. But the trust that is built in a book club, the trust that is built in when you're having conversations, uh, is important. And during this time of COVID, many times, we just want to have a conversation with folks. We just want to, we don't want to be lectured at. We want to, I want to hear you, you want to hear me. Let's get some things done so that we can do some things better together. And then um, number seven is really our expectation is to maintain hope even in the face of the brutal facts. 
I think the most important thing that, or one of the, one of the things that I liked about the other West more was it was, it was, it, it was facts from his perspective, facts from his perspective. As we're talking about racial inequity in our country, facts, facts, facts. We cannot address an issue if there's not, if there's not whole hearted facts and truth. And everybody has a different truth, but let's look at, that's why it's important in a book club to have one document that we're going to listen to or that we're going to read. And here's what it said. The way you interpret that is up to you, but what is being said in it, that's, we don't wanna take it out of context. And I think so many times when it comes to, uh, especially racial issues, we take things out of context because we want to feel good or we don't want someone to feel bad. I hope that all makes sense. So those are our group expectations. I'm gonna stop share. Um, anybody on the call have any questions about any of those? Those are just the guidelines that we use. Hey, Laurent, Sandy, um, yeah. how many people are in this group, this uh, book club that you have? You know, we, we've had between, we started off with about 15, and we usually average around nine or 10, 11. Um, what I do is I send, like, we're getting ready to start another one in November. We usually do month long and we read a certain part of a book and then we'll talk about it. We'll need to read another uh, part of the book and we'll talk about it. Some folks do it the other way where they just read the entire book and then they talk about it. Um, there, many times there was too much to digest in a yeah. three or four page book. And so we, okay. and many people didn't have time to try to, we're only meeting for an hour and going through the expectations and then making sure that the conversations uh, on Zoom, the conversations happen in a, in a good way. Um, we can't spend an hour talking about the whole book. So we'll do three chapters and we'll give specific questions and we'll give it the next week. And so folks have been able to stay committed. And if you miss a week, you're not losing things because we're still talking, we're talking about a different, a different, different one. So most of the time I will send something out to the whole network. And so that's a few hundred people. And depending on the topic, uh, when we used to do, when we used to do book studies or when we used to do like uh, article studies, we would have multiple people on, uh, too many people a lot of times, but we would break up into groups of four or five people. And you can do that pretty, pretty good on Zoom. And then we'd have, everybody would be posed the same question. We'd come back, we'd talk about it, we'd go back again. So. Uh, and then uh, just a quick follow-up, did any, did any group member have the opportunity to propose a particular book or what was there any sort of hierarchy where you had to select it on a committee? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to overcomplicate. I, just, I mean, if you've got the great model, I wanna mimic it is my yeah. point. It, I, I started off, with choosing the topics. And then as I would get suggestions, we would just vote. Hey, what do you think? Is anybody reading a good book right now? Is any, does anybody have an article that they'd like to share? And so we would keep them all pretty uh, academic, uh, pr pretty, pretty, as I would say, pretty meaty. Uh, so that like, like the other Westmore is a great book to use as a, in, in my opinion, as a starter book club because there's not necessarily a lot of facts it's he's telling his story and we can talk and we can relate and we can get some trust going uh what we've tried to do is to stay out of those opinion type of type of things so uh, when you come you're coming with here's what this said here is the 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 base and the history behind it now let's talk about it from your perspective but it was always it's always been geared towards now, what are you going to do as a after school provider or as an educator in the school to make a difference from what you have just read? Um, that's what we do. So there, like the, the one that we're going to be doing in November is, uh, and it was voted on by, it was, it was given to us by somebody else. It was called, it's called uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist. I haven't read the book. I just started reading it. And so, what I found is as I was putting the schedule together, there's like 18 chapters. And 
we only have a month to do it and one month or one week is uh, Thanksgiving. So I'm just trying to figure out, but doing it doable like that, but making sure that everybody, depending on the author, it works uh, and the topic it works. So we just finished that one here and you might want to consider maybe rolling it over to December. It's that good. Anyway. That's what we thought. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, in, in the discussion, since we meet for an hour, we really, we, we, try to, we try to break things up into 15, 15 minute intervals. And um, usually the last, the last maybe five or 10 minutes of the conversation, we kind of open it up for people to get a little emotional and to bring just an open-ended question of what would you do? And uh, sometimes the calls last till 1.30. Sometimes they've, they've lasted till two o'clock. Sometimes they're done. Uh, but really just to create a safe place where people can be vulnerable around a purpose is what we've been trying to do. And once that safe place and you have those ground rules, this, here's what we're doing. Now I can be vulnerable and share my thoughts. Uh, and then here's the purpose. We're really just trying to do we're trying to destroy our ignorance around a certain topic. Other questions? In 30 minutes, I hope this was, was what we wanted um, just to give us an overview. But if you want more information uh, about um, our book club, I will also, I will also just, when we send out, when I send out the next information for the book club, I'll send it to you all and forward it to anybody. It's really open to anybody. I think on our last one, we had someone from, um, not Ogallala, but from, uh, it was Western Nebraska. I cannot remember where it was from. There was, there was a couple of people. They didn't stay very long, but they were there. So, other questions? I don't have a question, but uh, thank you so much, Laron. Um, we did, uh, post uh, some information in the program for the Get Connected Conference. There's about four or five pages in there that specifically talk about if you want to start a book club to discuss the other with Westmore. It had some um, typical questions that you could use for your discussion. So um, that's posted up on our website. We're just getting the website kind of cleaned up here and, and next week it'll be all refreshed with all of the breakouts uh, the recordings posted on the on the conference website. And for the other Westmore, we do have the, that book club information. We also, um, I think it was on October 8th, I could be wrong on that, but we did have um, a bookseller who joined our Stay Connected webinar and she also had some resources about um, how to facilitate a book club or get started with a book club. So that's posted up on our Stay Connected website too. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Jan. And also on the October 15th webinar, Van Price shared some of the books that she's been reading. And a lot of um, the books that she mentioned look very interesting. So, Laurent, if you haven't had a chance to view that one, maybe take a look at it. Uh, Van Price with Lincoln Public Schools. Okay. Yeah, it would be maybe an, a good idea to just start a uh, literature list, books or articles, or um, Lauren, if you don't mind sharing some of the things you're reading, we could maybe post that too. So you're done with the other Westmore and want to keep reading and talking. Here's some other texts you could look at and consider. We do have quite a few after school programs now that are looking at the other uh, Westmore and starting discussions around it. So we could help them continue that. I, I really think it, I mean, in if one thing that I can say, the conversations are more important than maybe the information, the, having real conversation during this time and being able to connect with people has been very, very valuable to the folks that have been a part of our, 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 our book clubs and just our conversations. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's one thing to be, be able to touch somebody, but to be able to connect and feel like you're a part of a community within this new system of doing things that's important as well it's really important thank thanks you so me. much thanks Thank Laurent, for you for your time today again and um we're 
We're taking a stay connected break in November, but we'll start back up on December 3rd and uh, resume our series. Um, we do on the Stay Connected webpage, as always, you can report your participation in order to receive credit uh, for professional development. And also if you want to um, add anybody to our email list that you think would want to get the notifications about these webinars, uh, that's also available on the website. So thank you, Lauren, and uh, we appreciate those of you that are able to join live and that will view the recording um, as you have time with your program staff or families or friends or um, whoever you might find that's interested. So we appreciate your time. Have an awesome everybody. day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a great day.